us. Let's get this homework out of the way. I'm going to do all the odd ones. So solve the equations. I know I'm multiplying 3 to z, so I'm going to divide it away, which means I divide it away from 18. z is by itself. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Number three, I am dividing negative 4 from m, which means I'm going to multiply 4, negative 4, excuse me, to uh, negative m divided by 4. My negative 4s, my negative m by 4 are gone, leaving the m. And whatever I multiply to one side, I multiply to the other side. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Number 6, or excuse me, number 5. A negative times a positive is a negative. When I take 6.2 and multiply it to 5.6, I get 34.72. All right, uh, let's go to number seven. I got fraction divided by a fraction. That means I'm going to use key change flip. I'll take five over two. And I'm going to multiply it to negative five over four. This will give me negative 25 over eight. And this can be reduced because eight goes into 25 three times, this would be a negative three and one eight, because eight times three is 24, and that's one less than 25. Let's go to number nine, it says write point seven five is a fraction. When I write this as a fraction, I remember to take the line, or the, the dot, turn it into a line, put a zero for each number that's on top, and then put a one in front of those zeros. I can divide this by 25 over 25. This is going to equal 3 fourths. All right, let's go down to number 11. Number 11 says I've got negative 3x because there's three negative red uh, blotches there. And then plus 4. I'm going to make this equal to negative, that's 9, 10, 11. I'm going to have to subtract 4 from both sides to get my variable alone, negative 3x. And negative 11 and negative 4 make negative 15. Now I will divide by negative 3 to get x by itself which means I'll divide negative 15 by 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And 15 divided by 3 is 5, so x is 5. Let's go to number 12. Number 12 says I've got 2b plus 7 equals 3. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Remember, I'm doing PEMDAS backwards, and that's a sad map. Back. I'm going to do everything backwards. So um, this will leave me 2b equals, uh, well, <clears throat> uh, we got, this is number 12. I was actually doing the wrong one. I need to do number 13, where I'm minusing 3, and then I'm going to minus 3 from this side. Sorry about that. I do have all the odd ones. You got the evens. This will leave me 4b is going to be equal to negative 12 because nine, negative 9 and negative 3, they're both the uh, same sign. When my signs are the same, I keep the sum and I keep the same sign. 
Now I'm going to divide by 4 to get b by itself, which means I'll divide negative 12 by 4. And that's going to give me a negative 3, because a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now I'm on number 15. Uh, I see that negative 16 plus, or it's going to be minus 7 equals 17. So I need to get rid of the negative 7. I'll add 7 to do that, which means I will add 7 to my 17. Now I got negative 16 equals 24. Well, now I'm going to divide my negative 6 so I can get t by itself. Whatever I divide from one side, I divide from the other. Positive divided by a negative equals a negative. 24 divided by 6 equals 4. My answer should be <coughs> t equals negative 4. And now, uh, number 17, I'm going to subtract 2.3. Remember, I'm trying to find out what g is right now. So I need to get everything on the other side of this equal sign. So I'm going to minus 2.3 over here. This will give me negative 5g, right? Because this is going to come down. And now I've got two negatives. When my signs are the same, I find the sum. So I'm going to add these numbers together. This is going to give me 21.1. That's if they're both negative. So will this be okay? So now I've got to get rid of this negative 5. I'm going to divide it by negative 5 because negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. I have 1g left over. And whatever I divide from one side, I divide from the other side. I have a negative divided by a negative. And that's going to give me a positive. Now I got to do 21.1 divided by 5. 21.1 divided by 5 equals 4.22. And just in case anyone gets the idea that this is a 9, let me make sure they understand it's a 4. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Next is number 19. I'm just going to go ahead and move it a little bit here so I can make sure I got room to work. All right, let's go ahead and work it. Uh, I've got negative 4 times p. That's a negative 4p. I've got negative 4 times negative 9 over 4. I can reduce my 4s to 1s. And that'll give me a negative 1 times a negative 9. That's plus 9, right? A negative times a negative is a positive, and 1 times 9 is 9. All that's got to equal negative 5. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, subtract 9 from both sides. Negative 5 and negative 9 make negative 14. That's equal to negative 4 times p. I'm going to have to divide by negative 4 to get p by itself. Whatever I divide from one side, I divide from the other. A negative divided by negative equals a positive. And 14 divided by 4. That equals 3.5. All right, we're moving along to number, uh, let's see, 21 next. Let me clean this up a bit. All right, I didn't want you to waste video time watching me copy and paste up and erase it, so I just brought it over. Um, well, 2.3 times 4.5, we got to distribute properties first. So let's do that. Uh, 2.3 times 
4.5. That's going to equal 10.35. So this is equals 10.35. And 2.3 times h is plus 2.3 h. All that has to equal negative 9.2. All right, now I'm going to subtract 10.35 so I can move it to the other side. I'm moving all the numbers away from b. Remember, I want to get b by itself. That's the goal. So I'm going to move the numbers first. Whatever I subtract from one side, I'm going to subtract from the other. This is going to give me negative uh, 19.55. Remember when my signs are the same, I find the sum. I'm going to keep the sign, same sign. So now this is going to equal uh, 2.3b. I need to get b by itself, so I'm going to divide by 2.3. Now b has been isolated, and now I simply have to put in my calculator what is uh, 19.55 divided by 2.3, and that's 8.5. Now I remember that a negative divided by a positive is a negative, so that answer is going to be uh, negative 8.5 equals h. I'm sorry, I said B. I see it was H over here. Obviously, this got messed up and looked like a B, but it should be H. All right, I'm going to set up for the next problem. Hold on. All right, got the next problem, number 23. says negative 51.9 equals 7.3Y minus 5.18. I want to get Y by itself, so I'm going to get rid of the numbers first. Remember, I do PEMDAS backwards. So when I see subtraction, I'm going to use addition. So I'll be adding 5.18. Whatever I add to one side, I'll add to the other. Notice I lined up my decimals. Now this is going to leave this to 7.3y. And I have to subtract here because I have a positive and a negative. That means I'm going to take the big number minus the small number. Since I'm subtracting, I'll need a zero here. Uh, I'm going to take the nine, turn it to eight, and that leaves me with 10. 10 minus eight is two, and eight minus one is seven. My decimal comes down, and 51 minus five, that's going to be 46. Because uh, my sign is negative on the bigger number, it'll be negative 46.7 equals 7.31. Now, get y by itself, I'm going to divide by 7.3. Whatever I divide from one side, I divide from the other. All right, now what is uh, 4.6? Oops, sorry, take that back. 4.6.72. Divided by 7.3. That's going to be equal uh, to 6.4. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative. My 7.3 has gotten rid of, so I have a Y there. And that means my answer is a negative. 6.4 equals Y. All right, let's go to number 25. I'm going to erase this and clean it. All right, I got a fraction here, a uh, bunch of fractions. I need to get A by itself. Remember, that is the goal, to get A alone. So I need to move everything else. 
I'm going to get rid of the five over six by, uh, let's see, I'm gonna add five over six. Whatever I add to one side, I must add to the other. Remember when I say add, it means I'm gonna make a positive five over six, but I'm subtracting one of the two here. Well, these are gone because five over six minus five over six uh, is zero. So now I have A over four left. I gotta figure out what's going on over here. I need a common denominator to combine these. So I'm gonna multiply this to three over three. And that will give me a common denominator of six. So now I have five over six. I'm gonna be minusing one times three is three, two times three is six, and a minus three over six. Well, five minus three is two. So that leaves me two over six is equal to A over four. Now I know I'm dividing four from this side, so I'm gonna to have to multiply by four because I always do the opposite. Well, I got a four on the top, four on the bottom, so I can reduce them. But remember, even though that helps me get A, whatever I multiply to one side, I have to be willing to multiply to the other side. Well, four and six are both, uh, they both can be divided by two. So four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. And I have two um, times two, and that's gonna be four. And one times three will be three. And four over three can be turned to one and one third. So that means number 25 is one and one third is equal to A. All right, let's go ahead and set for the next one. All right, it looks like I got room to work underneath here, so I'm just gonna work under it. Um, I see that I'm trying to get B alone. So I've got to move everything on the other side of B. First, I'll subtract two. Now that's going to give me negative B over three is equal to, well, I need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this to two over two. Now that's going to equal uh, two over four. No, four over two, I'm sorry, four over two. And it's going to be, uh, let's see, I got, uh, that was two over what negative, oh, that's negative four over two. And I have uh, negative five plus negative four, that's negative nine. And my denominator stays the same at two. And now I got to get rid of this negative three and get B by itself. That means I'm going to multiply this to negative three. Now I have a three on the top, three on the bottom. Uh, that gets rid of my negatives and my three and leaves me to be by itself. But whatever I multiply to one side, I have to multiply to the other. So I'm gonna multiply this side to negative three. A negative times a negative is a positive and nine times three is 27. And two times one is two. I know that two goes into 27 13 times with one left over. It's 13 times two is 26. So my answer must be 13 and a half is B. All right, number 29 is next. <clears throat> I get I gotta get not uh, V by itself. So uh we must get rid of everything else. I'm going to move my numbers first, so I'm going to subtract 4 over 5, which means I have to subtract 4 over 5 from this side. 
Uh, now, this is where it gets tricky because I need common denominators. Uh, so I'm going to multiply. Uh, let's see. I need to combine 5 and 8. And that's going to give me, uh, I'm going to rewrite this over here. Um, I can put 5 and multiply it to 8 over 8, right? That'll give me a 40. And I'll multiply 8 times 5 over 5. That'll give me 40. So let's rewrite the problem. Now I've got um, 8 times 4. Is that a negative 4? Let me see here. No, that was just, uh, oh, yes, it was a negative 4. Okay, hold on. So let's see. Uh, if that was a negative 4, then 4, 8 times negative 4, that's going to be negative 32 over 40. Um, and then we're going to be, looks like we're adding it to 5 times 7 is 35 over 40. Uh, that's this part here. All this has to equal now 9 over 4 times B. Um, I see my signs are different, so I find the difference. That means I take the big number minus the small number. That leaves me with 3 over 4 is equal to 9 over 4V. I know the only way to get rid of 9 over 4 is to multiply it to 4 over 9. Whatever I multiply to one side, I have to multiply to the other. Uh, my 9s cross each other out to make 1, so do my 4s. And that leaves me with 1B left over. I can see that 3 and 9 are both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Um, 4 and 40 are both divisible by 4. 40 divided by 4 is 10. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Now I have 1 times 1. That's 1. Now I have 3 times 10. That's 30. Um, so that means my answer is 1 over 30 equals B. This was a lot of work, so I want to double check everything. <clears throat> uh, this was 8 times 4, which is, or 8 times negative 4, because this was a negative 4 over here. That made it negative 32. 8 times 5 is 40. 7 times 5 is 35. 8 times 5 is 40. Uh, and this is equals negative 9, 4 equals, oh, wow, okay. I missed a negative sign here, which means this would be negative, which means this would be a negative 4 over 9 which means this would be a negative 4 over 9, and that's multiplying a negative times a positive, which would make that a negative 1 over 30. My apologies. I'm glad I double-checked my work. All right, let's go down to number 31. It says, is your friend correct? Okay, uh, let's go ahead and write this out. I've got uh, negative 3 times x plus 6 minus 12. Let's work this out. First, a negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. The negative 3 plus or times 6 will be a negative 18. Then uh, this will be negative 12 afterwards because the negative 3 is not being distributed to that. Now, negative uh, 18 and negative 12 make negative 30. because My signs are the same. I find the sum. Now I have negative 3x minus 30. Um, that doesn't, oh, there's an equal sign here. Maybe it'll work out. I need to realize this is all going to be equal to 0 because I'm solving for x. I'm solving it. So i got to find out what x is. So I'm going to add 30 to both sides. That gives me negative 3x uh, is equal to 30. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. 
So now I got to divide by negative 3 to get x by itself. Whatever I divide from one side, I divide from the other. And 30 divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 10. So 31 should be negative 10. So your friend is wrong because x equals negative 10. All right, let's move on to number 35 or 33. Uh, it says solve the equation, check your solution. I got 3v minus 9v. Oh, my signs are different, so I find the difference. Both of them have the variable v, so I can combine these like terms. This will make a negative 6v is equal to 30. Now I'm going to divide by negative 6. 30 divided by negative 6. Well, that's positive divided by negative, which gives me a positive number. 30 divided by 6 will give me a negative 5. V equals negative 5. All right, number 35. i got to combine all these Ds because they're like terms. So I'll leave 72 over here. There's no number with it yet. Uh, negative 8 and negative 5 make negative 13D. And negative 13 plus 7 makes a negative 6D. Now I'm going to divide by negative 6 to get D by itself, which means I'll divide 72 by negative 6. A positive divided by negative is a negative. And 72 divided by 6. That's 12. So negative 12 should be my answer. Whew, okay, uh, let's move on. 37 uh, says you have $9.25. How many games can you bowl? Well, the games cost $2.25 per game. Games is what we're trying to find. That's going to be our X. So we're going to put 2.25 times X. That's the number of games that we're buying. Then it says uh, you need, you're going to buy this. You, you bowl if you rent your shoe. Your shoe rental is two fifty. dollars so I'm going to put plus two fifty. dollars That's how much I'm spending, right? 225 per game plus 250 and remember I only have nine dollars and 25 cents so that's what it's got to equal let's see uh, how much how many games I can get well <clears throat> I see here that I'm gonna have to minus 2.50 because I'm isolating my X so if I minus 2.50 It's going to lead me to 0.25x equals, uh, let's see, we got a 5 here. This would be a 7. This would be a, ooh, sorry about that. Uh, this would be a 5. This would be a 7. This would be a 6. I remember I'm going to have to borrow one from here, right? 12 minus 5 is 7, 8 minus 2 is 6. Now I have to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide by 2.25. That gets x all alone. Whatever I divide from one side, I divide from the other. Now I'm putting my calculator. Six point seven five divided by two point two five. That gives me three. So my answer is three games. I'll be able to purchase three games. All right, let's keep going. I got number thirty nine here. Solve the problem. The height of the top of the roller coaster is ten times h. So this top over here. Is 10 H's. Uh, it says the height decreases by 100. That's right down here, right? Uh, from the top to the bottom of the hill. The height of the bottom is negative 10. So this is negative 10 down here. They want us to tell them what was H. 
So uh, remember, we're going to have uh, 10H, right? And we're going to be minusing 100. That's some amount we went down the roller coaster. All that's got to equal negative 10. Well, I know I can add 100 to this side to get rid of that negative 100 so I can isolate my H. Whatever I add to one side, I add to another. This is going to give me 10H is equal to 90. My signs are different. I take the big number minus the small number to keep the sign of the big number. Now I'm going to divide by 10 to get H by itself which means I'll divide 90 by 10, and 90 by, divided by 10 is 9. So let's see, that's going to be uh, 9. We're talking feet, right? Yes, 9 feet. All right, that's all of them. Uh, we'll grade it in class. Have a great night and good luck with the rest. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to give you a peek at number 40. For those that don't have the books in front of them, number 40 is this one right here. All right, see you in class.